All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a double exposure, or in this case, a triple exposure, using uh, these three images, this one, this one, and this one, to make something that looks like this. And uh, it's not as hard as you might think it is. So let's go ahead and get started. Because my picture of Darren here is a raw file, when I open it in Photoshop, it's going to open like this. So either do these edits here in Photoshop, in uh, Camera Raw, or just do them in Lightroom before you ever export to Photoshop. But I'm going to go ahead and just adjust my exposure, just lighten it up a little bit, and uh, maybe bring down the shadows just a touch. We don't want too dark of an image. In fact, we want a little bit of a brighter image, so I might even bring up the blacks just a little bit, just to open up some of those shadows, bring up my highlights, and uh, I could make some other adjustments. Uh, I am going to crank up the clarity a little bit just to make things a little more intense because this image is going to end up looking kind of soft. I want to put a little more punch on her, so I might bring that up a little bit, and then I'll go ahead and just hit open here. Okay, at this point, we are uh, ready to move on. We could start by doing some retouching and some cropping, but I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to crop this at, and I want to wait till I'm done uh, a little bit later on to do that. And some of this retouching is going to go as we go away as we kind of add some stuff later on. So let's just skip right to the good stuff. Let's go ahead, and um, what we want to do is we want to select this young lady and separate her from the background. Uh, you should know how to do that, but let's go into Select and choose Select and Mask to do that. There are about 850 million different ways to do this. This is just the way I'm going to choose to do this. So feel free to follow along or do it in your own way, however you prefer. So I'm, I'm going to go here and select and mask. And by default, my view is in onion skin. That's where I want to be with the transparency around, I don't know, 40 to 60%. That's not super important. I'm going to start here with my quick selection brush. I'm just going to click and drag over this young lady here to select her. I'm going to be real careful that my brush never touches the background. Any part of my circle, I don't want it to touch the background. Photoshop pays real close attention to what you click on and what you don't. And it tries real hard to make sure it keeps the stuff you clicked on and not keep the stuff you didn't click on. So if at any point my circle touches the background, that's just going to confuse Photoshop later on. So I'm really going to be careful to make sure that it doesn't. And I feel like I got a pretty good start here. Let's take a look. This is a little bit hard to see because she's got blonde hair on a white, uh, white or blank background. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to change my view mode to on black to get a better look. And you can see my selection is actually pretty rough. Not bad down here, but pretty rough here around the hair. So we're going to switch to the refine edge brush tool at this point, which is the second brush here down. And the way this brush works is you basically just paint over areas and ask Photoshop to look a little bit closer at that area. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger by using the right bracket key, maybe a little too big, so a little smaller with the left bracket key. I'm going to zoom in here, and we're just going to go around these areas of her hair and just tell Photoshop, hey, why don't you see if you can't make that a little bit better? It's not going to do a great job, but it's going to do good enough for what we're trying to do. So I'm just going to go around, smooth all these edges out, try to push any of that white out of there that doesn't belong. Get that right there out of there. Same thing over here. Let's clean this up a little bit. So this is all just done with the Refine Edge brush tool. Again, it's not looking that great. If we were doing a real selection for something different, we'd probably spend a little more time getting this to look better. But for what we're doing today, a, a somewhat decent selection is going to be just fine. Just fine. So I'm going to work my way around here, make sure I've got all these little hairs there. Let's check her shoulders. This looks fine. I'm not really going to worry about that. Photoshop's good. And this down here is all going to get cropped out later on, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Let's go over here. Let's see if we can't tighten this up a little bit by checking Smart Radius and adjusting our radius a little bit. What I like to do is take this all the way up to plus 250. Ultimately, this is going to be on a white background, so I'm going to kind of switch back and forth between on black and on white because I do want to be able to see what this is going to look like when I output it. And then I just start slowly lowering this radius down until I get something that looks pretty normal. Let's switch back to on black here. And I might actually raise that back up just a touch. I feel like we went a little too low. And it looked a little better up high. So this is not the right number. It may be completely different for you. Don't feel like if you type in 85, you'll get what, uh, what looks good on mine. You just got to have to find it. I'm not going to worry about any of these other ones. I do sometimes like to check decontaminate colors. Sometimes it works really well and is really helpful. Other times, not so much. And I think this time, not going to be super helpful. See, it got rid of a lot of her hair up here. Not real crazy about how it looks. So I'm going to uncheck that. But I do want to make sure that I output to a layer mask. Now, if you do decontaminate colors, you have to do new layer with layer mask. You can see 
uh, layer mask right here is not an option. So make sure you do this one and you're just going to end up with an extra layer. In fact, I'll just do that just in case you do do decontaminate colors. So I'll leave that on and I'm going to go ahead and just press open. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uncheck that. And then I'll go ahead and just press OK on my selection here. And you see that gave me a new layer with a layer mask. This one's turned off, so it's still there if we need it, but we're not going to worry about that yet. So let's uh, let's move on. At this point, I want to make uh, this image black and white. I'm going to do this in black and white. You do not have to. You're more than welcome to do it in color. But let me show you how I'm going to do this in black and white. Uh, I do want to do it so that I can make adjustments later on should I need to. So I'm going to do that with an adjustment layer. So I'm going to click on my black and white circle here at the bottom of my layers panel. I'm going to choose a black and white adjustment layer. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to increase the reds. I want her skin tone to be nice and light. And even the yellows just to lighten all that up. See, that even cleaned up some of her skin for me, which is why I wanted to wait on doing the retouching. Because now I don't have quite as much to remove. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. But I do, I am going to put a layer down here at the bottom layer on, later on. And I don't want that to be black and white. Remember, adjustment layers will make everything below them, whatever adjustment you make here. But I want to make sure it only applies to this layer. So I'm just going to right click on this and I'm going to choose Create Clipping Mask. And that's going to tell Photoshop to only apply this layer style to the layer directly below it. And that's what that did there. And we're done with that for now. So we may come back and make some adjustments on this later, but for now, we're going to just move on. I'm going to come back down here to my bottom layer. I'm going to make sure I click on my layer thumbnail, not my layer mask thumbnail. I'm going to grab my spot healing brush and just do some quick retouching here. I won't make you watch, make you watch me, but I'll just come in here and clean these up and uh, we'll fire this back up when I'm done. All right, I've cleaned up the skin. I feel pretty good about it. It's not quite perfect, but it's good enough for what we're going to do next, which is we're going to drop in this forest image. So Obviously, you're going to be using your own images, and yours might look different or be totally different from this one. In fact, I hope it is. Let me just grab my Move tool, and uh, to move an image over from one, you just grab the Move tool, which is the top one right here on the, key, the toolbar. Keyboard shortcut is V, and you just click and drag. It looks like nothing's happening, but trust me, it is. Still holding down the mouse, I'm going to put it over this tab. Wait for a second. I'm going to come down here and drop it right on top of her face and let go. Now, you can see where it showed up. It dropped in between these two layers, so it's part of that clipping mask, and it's also in black and white. I actually don't want that. I want this to be in color. So if that happens, I'll just click and drag this up to the top so it's on top of that. But you can see it's still got that clipping mask on it, which we also do not want. So let's right-click on this and choose Release Clipping Mask. And that turns it back into a normal layer. Uh, I could have prevented that had I just clicked on this layer before I dragged that image over. Then it would have showed up on top of it. But now you know how to fix that in case it does happen. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. and I'm just going to do Control-T. Oops, I'm going to click on the layer first, and then I'm going to do Control-T. And uh, remember, whenever we do Control-T, we always hold down Shift and drag from the corner. I've recently started doing Shift and Alt at the same time because that resizes all four corners for me. I'm going to move this and get it about, uh, I'm going to have to guess that that's probably about the size I want. Go ahead and press Enter to lock that in. Now we need to do a couple of things to, uh, to make this see-through. First, I'm going to lower down the opacity on this just so I can get a feeling for what's happening back there. And that's actually right about where I want that tree. I might move it down just a little bit because I also want this line of trees to kind of go right there through her forehead. And the other thing I need to do is I need to get a layer mask on this layer that matches this layer mask. And this is actually really, really simple. All I'm gonna do is hold down the control, T on my, control key on my keyboard, excuse me. And I'm gonna click right here on the layer mask thumbnail. So it's important that you click on that part and not on this. So I'll click right on that. You can see that loaded a selection of my layer mask thumbnail. And I'm going to come up to layer one, and I'm just going to add a layer mask to that with this add layer mask button. Now, perfect. It gave me a great little layer mask. But the problem is now that if I move this, it's going to move my image and my layer mask. And that's not what I want. What I want to do is be able to move the image, but not the layer mask. So I'm going to unlink this. I'm going to click on this chain right here. And this will allow me to, if I click on the layer thumbnail, it will allow me to move the layer thumbnail, but not the layer mask. And now I can move this around again. I can control T it if I want to. Again, shift and alt and drag from the corners to kind of play with the size. Get it right about where I want it. I'm pretty happy with that right there. Go ahead and press enter. And now here's the thing that nobody ever shows you in these YouTube tutorials on how to do these. Nobody ever tells you uh, how to pick the right blending mode. They all just pick the one that works best for their image. But guess what? 
every two images will blend together very differently. So you have to really be careful about which one you pick. What I like to do is I just like to click right here on darken. And then I just use my uh, arrow keys on my keyboard and I press down and I just kind of go through until I see one that works for me that I kind of like. The first time I did this, I think I did darken, but now that I'm looking at it again, I kind of like that darker color and I might come back and pick the one, pick that one. And uh, that one's not really working for me. None of these light ones are going to work, I think. So, oh, I do kind of like overlay though. So you can actually go through all of these. Ooh, I really like that one. Dang, I'm having a hard time choosing. So I'm just going to keep scrolling through until I get to all of them. Some of them are not even close. And that's the bottom. Once you get to luminosity, you're at the end. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do that darker color. I think that was probably one of my favorite ones. Now we got some issues here in that this up here looks good, but this down here is all a little too much. I already know I'm going to crop out some of this down here, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I'd like to lighten this up down here. I don't want to completely get rid of all this down here, but I would like to lighten it up. And let me show you how to do that. I'm going to click back onto my layer mask, which is a layer mask thumbnail, which is this dude right here. And of course, we know that if I paint with black, anything that's on this layer will disappear. But I don't want it to completely disappear. I don't want it completely gone. What I do want is for it to kind of be faded out and to not be quite as strong uh, as it, down here as it is up here. Well, you don't have to paint with just black or white. What I can actually do is choose kind of a grayish. I'm going to choose a little bit lighter gray, maybe right about there. You can see when I come and paint with that light gray down here, it's getting rid of it, but it's still there. It's not completely removing it from the image. Okay. And what I want to do is I kind of want to get over here around her face, but I really don't want to get rid of that tree. I really like that. But I'm a little bit worried because if I come and paint out here, it's also going to bring back that forest out here. And I don't want that yet. So what I'm going to do before I start painting up here on her face is I'm going to, again, I'm going to load that selection because when you have a selection, you can only paint inside of it. So again, I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna control click on that, that's gonna bring that selection back up. And then that will allow me to come in here with my white, my light gray brush. And this is maybe a little too light. I'm gonna darken this down just a touch. And kind of paint some of that. Oops, I should have made that actually lighter, not darker. There we go, because the lighter that is, the more of it we're going to see. And I might also adjust the opacity of this as well. So I'll come over here, and I'm going to lower this opacity down just a touch more. And there you go. I can still just faintly see the forest on her face. This, this tree over here still really stands out. I'm really happy with that. I really like that. I'm going to press Control-D to get that selection to go away. And again, if I wanted to, I could spend a little more time cleaning off her face and cleaning up that highlights and darkness, but I'm actually really happy with that. Down here looks a little bit weird, but guess what? I'm going to just crop that all out later on, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, let's do the same thing with the elk now. Let's come to this image right here. Again, move tool, click and drag. It looks like nothing happening, but I promise you it is. Come down here, drop it, and let go. If you get something like this, just go ahead and press OK. Don't worry about that bad boy. And again, I'm going to lower down the opacity of this so I can kind of see through, see them both, and I'll move this, and again, control T, shift and alt to resize, and I want, whoops, I got a little crazy there with my uh, resizing, let me make that a little bit smaller. I kind of have an idea of what I want, I want the elk to be coming, I don't want the antlers in her eyes. But I want the nose of the elk to be coming just off the edge of her head, kind of about like that. And I don't really want it covering up any part of her face, so I'm actually really happy with the way that looks right there. So I'll go ahead and press Enter on that. And we're basically going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to control click on the layer mask right here. We'll make sure we're clicked on layer two. We'll add a layer mask. And that's going to uh, blend that out. And then we'll start just choosing our blend modes. Again, I'll start with darken and just press my down arrow key on my keyboard until I end up with a layer blending mode that I like. Ooh, I like that darker color again. That one's working for me, although, ooh, I like that too. I like how it kind of lightens it up. I like how the elk and the tree blend together on screen. So I'll remember that as I keep going through them. That one's not bad either. Mm, I might like overlay on this one. So again, there's no, there's never a right blending mode for you to choose. You always got to find the one that works best for you and the one that you can make work. So 
that to me is the biggest problem with most of these tutorials in, on Photoshop is they never tell you this. They just tell you which one they use and they never tell you how to figure out which one's going to work better. So I ended up going with screen here and now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'll make sure I'm on my layer mask. Let's try this light gray square again. There's a uh, square color again like I used last, last time. Grab my brush tool and again I'm just going to kind of blend this out. Whoops, I forgot to load a selection. And so when I was painting out here, I was actually doing stuff. So let's make sure we get a selection on there. Again, control click, and I'll just leave that selection there. And now I can only paint inside of the selection. I don't have to worry about painting outside of it. And there you go. I'm really liking that. I do want to make sure there's no hard lines, especially right there on her head. So for this one, I'll set my brush to a pure black by pressing D and then X. And again, I'll make sure I'm on a real soft edge brush, lower my hardness down to zero. And I'm just going to blend that edge out of there right there, just like that. Perfect. Now, I do want to bring the elk's nose back in, so it's just coming right off of her head. To do that, obviously, I need to get rid of the selection, so I'll control D that. I am going to turn the opacity all the way up, back up to 100 for this. It's not that super helpful, but it does make it a little bit better. And I'll just make sure I'm on my layer mask. I'm just going to come out here and nice small brush, and I'll paint with white. That's going to bring his nose back, and obviously it brought back too much. So now I'll switch to black, and I am going to harden up my brush a little bit. So I'll just right-click, choose a hardness of around probably 70%. Make it a little bit smaller with the left bracket key, and then I'll just come in, zoomed in nice and tight. I'm not going to worry about what happened right there. I'll show you how I'm going to fix that. I'll just go around the nose and get all that blue out of there a little bit right there, left. And then to fix this right here, I'll just switch back to white by pressing X on my keyboard. Whoops. And switch back to black by pressing X on my keyboard and clean that up a little bit. And same down here. Clean that up just a touch. There you go. Now, let's lower this back down. I did like that little bit lower opacity. That looks pretty dang cool right there. I'm really happy with the way that looks. Now, obviously, I got some cropping to do. So let's before we move on, let's grab our crop tool probably want to crop to a 4-5 or, or an 8-10 by 10 ratio, so that's going to work right there. I'm just going to bring this in until I get rid of any hard lines down there. Move this around. And I like the looks of that right there, so let's crop that up. And now we just got a couple other steps, a couple other things we got to do. I do want there to be just a touch of forest back here, just a touch of uh, the green coming from behind her. I'm actually going to come back to this layer mask right here of the forest. And I'm going to put um, just a little bit of forest in there by grabbing my brush tool. And actually, you know what? Before we do this, this will be a little bit easier to see if we do our next step first. What I want to do is come down here to the bottom. I'm going to click on my background layer. And we're going to fill this white space in or this blank space with a color. I'm going to click on my uh, black and white circle here, adjustment layer. And I'm going to choose solid color. And this box will pop up. And I'm going to bring my cursor out here. And I'm going to pick a color from my image that kind of works with my background and my two images. I like that right there. I might make that just a touch more blue. Yeah, I like that color a lot right there. So I'll go ahead and press OK. And now at this point, I'm going to come back to this layer mask thumbnail. I'm going to bring a little bit of that forest back in by just painting with a real soft edged, kind of a gray brush. But the problem is, again, if I hit her, it doesn't quite look right because I'm actually adjusting the layer mask that I have on her. So what can I do about that? Well. Let's load this layer mask selection again, but now just she is selected. I can't paint anything out here. And let's make sure we're on our layer mask. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to uh, go up here, go to select and select inverse or just inverse. And that's going to select everything except for her. And now when I paint with this brush tool, I can't affect her. I can only affect stuff that's outside of the selection. And I do want to bring just a touch of that forest back outside of her. Let's control D that to make that selection go away. And I like that. I like being able to just barely see some of that forest right there. Uh, again, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. That's just something that I think looks good. Now, last step. Well, that's not true. Second to last step. I'm going to click on my very top layer on my uh, layers panel. This last step is optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. But we're going to add a gradient map just to give this kind of a cool tone. I'm going to click here on my adjustment layer, a black and white circle, and we'll choose gradient map this time. 
And yikes, that looks pretty devilish. We probably don't want to do that one. So let's click on this down arrow right here. And I want you to click on this little gear right here. And I want you to go down to photographic toning. And click on that. And just go ahead and click on OK when this box pops up. And you've got some different photographic uh, toning options here that you can choose from. I'll make that a little bigger. What I would do if I were you, just kind of click through them and see if there's one that kind of speaks to you, that kind of makes it look good, that gives you the feel that you were going for. If none of them work, if none of them are really your thing, then don't do one of these at all. Certainly don't have to. This is an entirely optional step. I kind of like this one right here. I feel like that gives it a good look. It did kind of take away some of my black and whiteness, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and change the layer blending mode of this layer. And again, I'll just click on Darken. And I'm just going to press the down arrow until I get kind of a cool blend of my toning that I like. And again, I can also adjust the opacity of this if I feel like it's a little too intense. So let's see how that looks. There's my before and after. It's subtle. But I like the difference that it makes. And now we're pretty much done. The only thing I want to do is I want to come back to my two blend layers. I'm going to play around with the opacity. Now that I kind of have everything right where I want it, I'm going to decide if I've put my opacity at the best numbers. So I might actually lower down this elk one just a touch. I was at 67. And I'll come back to the forest one. And I'll play around with this and decide where I want that to be. And I may come up and decide to do a different gradient map. So I'll click on this, try some different ones, and see if one of those doesn't work a little bit better. And that's pretty much it. We've just created a real cool double or triple exposure in this case. And uh, it's uh, turned out to be a pretty good-looking project, I think. So now, of course, we'll just save it up. Once, save it once as a PSD and then save it again as a JPEG so we have something to turn in. And uh, you're good to go.